Do you think that the federal government will encourage provinces, for instance, to put lockdowns again? Are you, are you looking at possibly talking to the provinces? This may or may not be um, a dangerous variant. Are you talking to the provinces, and what are the provinces telling you? Uh, I, my colleagues will most certainly be talking to the provinces, uh, you know, to talk about what we need to do. Right now, you know, we know that we need to look, take a very careful look at who's coming in from countries of concern, uh, which is, you know, what the health minister was pointing to today. Um, you know, on my front, we are certainly going to be speaking to the provinces about what we will be doing with, with 10 days sick leave uh, and, you know, how we can work with them to make sure that that uh, goes through their jurisdictions as well. I mean, federal jurisdiction is about 6 percent of, of the workforce. The other 94 percent are under provincial and territorial juris jurisdiction. So just as we've done, uh, you know, throughout the pandemic, we will work hand in hand with provinces and territories because we're respectful of their jurisdictions. So. When you're talking about those 10 days of paid sick leave for federally regulated um, workplaces, how many people are we talking about that don't already have um, paid sick days? So there are 900,000 workers in these federal in this you know federally regulated uh, jurisdiction. Uh, you know, and we're, we're talking about uh, some of the biggest uh, companies and some of the biggest uh, workforces in the country. Uh, even though, you know, it represents 6 percent, you're talking about telecommunications, you're talking about uh, air, you're talking about banking, uh, you're talking about transport, the transport sector as a whole. So it is large. And of those, we know that about 63 percent uh, do not get a full 10 days of paid sick leave. I mean, the fact of the matter is about 58 percent of the entire Canadian workforce doesn't get any paid sick leave. Uh, and, you know, you don't want people having to make the choice in, in, in a crunch. We know this from, you know, I, I asked people in the press conference today to harken back to the spring of 2020, you know, if you had a sniffle, um, you know, do you come into work? If you were concerned at all, if you missed the symptoms, do you come into work? And for too many people, far too many people in this country, it was a decision that they had to make where they were weighing the health of themselves and of their, of their colleagues at work with whether or not they could make the rent or, or pay for their groceries. And that is not something that, you know, should be. Uh, even, you know, at the best of times. So particularly now that we're living with a pandemic, one of the reasons why we, we landed on 10 days uh, is because, uh, you know, that's roughly five, you know, two, two, paid working day, two paid working weeks at five days each, 10 days, you know, when you've got a 14-day quarantine. That's how we landed on 10 yeah, days. That is a quarantine. This has been driven no, by what we've learned it. over the pandemic. But you also introduced uh, new legislation to protect health care workers from harassment. And Indeed. I'm interested in that one as well, because, you know, the right to protest remains, uh, as the justice minister explained, this is only the protests that block people from entering a hospital. We've seen those shots. We've seen those protests. Um, so how are you, how do you go about and do that you, without taking so people's right away to protest? Clear, carefully define in the legislation, Joyce, obstruction and intimidation, right? There, there is nothing that's taking away from anybody's right to peacefully protest. Uh, what we are saying is that when you obstruct healthcare workers from being able to do their jobs and when you intimidate them, that is crossing a line. And, you know, we saw that line crossed over the course of the summer to the disgust, I would say, of millions of Canadians, including myself. Uh, that is not how we treat healthcare workers in this country. So we wanted to make sure that law enforcement officials had all the tools that they needed in order to make sure that they were able to do the job. And on top of that, frankly, I think we want to send a very clear, less, a clear signal to healthcare workers in this country that we got their backs, that this is not as a whole, you know, the, the absolute vast majority of Canadians do not tolerate this sort of disrespect or intimidation of our healthcare workers, but most particularly with so many of them exhausted as we as we come out of this pandemic. I know that I, I just have a few seconds left, but there are three mm -hmm. weeks left to this session. Uh, very ambitious four bills that you're hoping to get through uh, the House and the Senate. How optimistic are you? Do you think these bills will become law by the end of the year? Uh, I am, you know, not going to get a step on the toes of the government house leader. I know, look, it, particularly when it comes to, you know, the legislation that we introduced today on, on 10, on 10 day paid sick leave, um, ASAP, 
as soon as possible. And I think that there's, you know, I think that there's a, a broad agreement in the House that we want to make sure that we support health care yeah. workers and workers right across this country. So watch this space is all I will say. And I'm glad we only have a few seconds left because I have to hold this phone up in order to make sure that we were able to do this interview at the last minute. And my arm's given up. Well, you did a great job, uh, Minister. Uh, thanks so much for being, th being there. Uh, Seamus O'Regan, Canada's uh, Labour Minister, have yourself a wonderful weekend, sir. Thank you, Joyce.